Alaska State Capitol, down in the far southeast panhandle of Alaska. Did any of you happen to pass through June on your way north here to Fairbanks? How about are you going to be passing through June on your way south? Okay. Mm -hmm. For many, many years now, I've served and I continue to serve as a legislative aide for the Alaska State Senate. 90% of the, all of the state of Alaska's revenue, that is to say, 90% of the state government's money with which we finance our state public infrastructure, 90% of that money comes from the oil in this pipeline. That money is used to fund everything across the board from all of our public facilities, our entire public education system, all of our ports, our roads, our harbors, our airports. Troopers, the correctional system, the courts, and all the judiciary. Ninety percent of all of that revenue is derived directly from the oil in this pipeline. It's the lifeblood of our economy here. Now, this oil also contributes a significant portion of the United States domestic oil supply. It peaked in 1988 when the oil in this pipe contributed 25 percent of the entire United States of America's domestic oil supply. Currently, due to our own decline in production and other projects that are starting to come online under the federal state, these days we're in the neighborhood of about 10 percent. But every bit of that oil comes through this pipe and goes out the other end there, about east. It gets loaded on the tankers. And then it's shipped on down to the west coast, to Washington, Oregon, California, even on down through the Panama Canal, and then back up to Texas, where it's either stockpiled or refined and distributed amongst the U.S. economy. Now, you may have heard of the Alaska Permanent Fund. That was set up back in the early 70s as they started construction of the pipeline. They wanted to recognize that this was also Alaskans' oil. They wanted to get some of it back to the people here. They set that fund up. It currently has a balance of about $48 billion. They take that fund and they invest it in an international portfolio around the world. The interest alone off of that fund is used to pay out a dividend to every man, woman, and child resident of our state, an annual dividend. And the amount of that dividend varies, of course, depending on how well our investments do and how much interest is earned. And it's a five-year moving average. They try to smooth it out that way. But the lowest the dividend's ever been, to my recollection, about $300. The most it's ever been is about $2,200. Last year's dividend was in the neighborhood of about 850. But every fall, come October, November, when you see those checks come out, you also see the corresponding sales of flat screen TVs. <laughs> Seriously, though, folks, every Alaskan has the right to choose to do whatever it is they might want to do with their own dividend. There's just as many of us out there that might choose to use it to buy toys or stuff like that, as opposed to, say, for example, reinvesting your dividend in your own personal portfolio of investments. A real popular program is the University of Alaska College Savings Plan. You put it aside for your kids' education later on. But for that matter, probably the vast majority of us take these dividends, we use them to put right back into our own fuel tanks, or use them to help pay our own personal bills, because it's pretty expensive to live here in Alaska. But that was a way for the politicians to recognize that this was a non-renewable resource. They wanted to try to convert it into a renewable resource financially, and give it that, some of that back to the people, and it churns through our economy that way. Now that concludes the presentation I had in mind for you this morning, folks. We've got a fantastic trip through history to share with you at the bottom of this hill. I've been a part of this operation for 23 years now. If any of you have any questions, 